We are on the way. On April 24, 1988, an animal rights rally was held in front of the Federal Building in Westwood Village, Los Angeles. It was an inspiring afternoon with many fine speakers. Amongst those addresses was one, an exceptional one, given by Tom Reagan. To abolish sport hunting has called Tom Reagan's address the greatest animal rights speech ever given. That address is now presented in its entirety. The Culture and Animals Foundation presents Tom Reagan. Our next speaker is a gentleman who is probably familiar to all of you. I, I, it's hard to even to, to even to set up an introduction for him. Because he is, he is a legion among those of us that are, that are activists. He is one of the gentlest and one of the strongest men I know. He's the author of The Case for Animal Rights, Dr. Tom Reagan. Hostility 
are perfectly natural feelings to have in the face of real, deep injustice, which is why we are gathered here today to declare war on vivisection, and we will not be satisfied with anything less than total victory. Another thing, uh, yet another thing we're said to be those of us who are abolitionists is ignorant. I mean, we don't know nothing. Ask us about DNA, we think you're referring to some national rifle lobby group. B12? That's a number what it's called in bingo, ain't it? In vivo research? That's something funny those Italians are doing to get their wine to taste as good as made in America. What about his basic Stone Age ignorance here? I love this part. I love this part of our group portrait, the vivisection industry's picture of us, the picture they pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to put out in the media. The reason I love it is because it's so demonstrably false. You have to wonder whether these people live on another planet. Don't they know about the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine? Don't these people know about the Medical Research Modernization Committee? Don't these people know about the veterinarians for animal rights, or nurses for animal rights, or psychologists for the ethical treatment of animals, or the 750 practicing physicians in the state of California who have denounced vivisection categorically? Don't these people know about the philosophers Peter Singer, and Steve Zaponsitz, and Bernie Rowland, and Susan and Laurie Pinson, and Sidney Yendon? Don't these people know about the theologians, Andrew Lindsay and John Bacher? Don't they know? what's going on in the real world? Don't they understand that all the people in all the groups I've mentioned representing the best, the most gifted, the most informed minds of our generation are speaking out against vivisection, which is why we're gathered here today to declare war on vivisection. They won't be satisfied with anything less than total victory. It's 
and we end which is wrong. We are gathered here today, you and I, to declare war and the deception. And we will not be satisfied until we've gotten every animal out of every cage in every laboratory. Of course, of course, what's really ironic, what's really ironic is how accurately the medical industrial complex describes itself in efforts to describe its critics. Consider the charge of ignorance. When we find out that 34% of postmortems reveal that the now deceased victim was misdiagnosed, 34% were being treated for diseases they did not have. 34% were not being treated for the diseases that killed them. When we find out that 60 to 80% of the 250,000 coronary bypass patients who undergo the surgery annually in the United States gain no increased lifespan when compared with patients who forego this radical surgery. When we find out that of the 900,000 cesarean deliveries performed in 1986, a full 24% of all infant births, at least 50% were unnecessary. When we find out that of the 120,000 pacemakers implanted during that same year, more than 50% were not medically indicated. When we learn all this, and there is much, much more to learn. When we find this out, even the most trusting among us must begin to wonder where the charge of ignorance really gets. All some people need to do is look in the mirror. What is true in the case of ignorance also is, in true, is true in the case of compassion. When we find out that one in every six Americans has no medical insurance, that one million Americans annually are denied needed medical care, that the infant mortality rate in the U.S. is among the highest in the world, that a black child born in America is more likely to die before reaching the age of one than an infant born in many third world countries, that some 300,000 black children are born in the U.S. every year without their mothers having received a single minute of prenatal care when we find out that what is true of blacks in America is comparably true of other minorities, Hispanics, people for example, and Asians. If curative or preventive health care exists, they don't get it because they can't afford it. When we find out that for years the people who receive preferential treatment in the organ transplant program as that holy of holies, the University of Pittsburgh, were not working class people from the steel mills, not working class people from the mines, but potentates from the Middle East who donated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands to medical school when we find out that there are almost a million elderly people who have incomes of less than $5,500 a year, two-thirds of whom do not qualify for Medicaid, when we find out that seven in every ten elderly who live alone face poverty and total impoverishment only after 13 weeks in a nursing home. Average cost $22,000 a year. Median income for the elderly, $11,000. When we find out where the truth lies, we find out who lies. Come on, let's be honest. If the medical industrial complex really was as compassionate as they want us to believe they are, it would be out front leading the crusade to make essential health care available to everyone. But they are not out front leading the parade. They are not even in the parade. The last thing the medical industrial complex wants is something other than a profit-driven industry. And just in case, just in case you think I exaggerate, just in case you think the medical industrial complex is the medical heads of health care industry version of Mr. Goodwrench, consider that the United States is only one of two so-called democracies in the world that do not guarantee necessary health care to each and every citizen, regardless of age, regardless of income, regardless of race, only one of two. The other democracy, in case you haven't already guessed, is South Africa. 
The evil of apartheid is cut from the same defective moral cloth as the dissection. Both represent the pattern of special privilege over fairness, custom over justice, power over respect, greed over compassion. Which is why those of us gathered here today are united not only in our opposition to apartheid in South Africa, but also in our opposition to apartheid in medical science and medical research. Today
are with the fifty princes. Precisely because those whose interests we represent, the tens of millions of animals in laboratories, precisely because they are unable to tell us what is being done to them. Precisely because the government inspection mechanisms for assuring compliance with the law have been shown time and time again to be inadequate. It has been necessary for some in our movement to enter some labs illegally there to document the waste and evil of vivisection done in the name of science. Just two things, just two simple things should be said here. The first is, thank God for the Animal Liberation Front! Thank God for Last Chance! Thank God for Band of Mercy! If it had not been for your courage and your skill, those of us assembled here today would not know what we do. We owe you and we thank you. Secondly, illegally obtained exposés of laboratory atrocities will continue.
decent people kindly in the vivisection industry, therefore we issue this healing call. Lay down your weapons. Lay down your scapples and claws. Lay down your Pavlovian slings and restraint chairs. Lay down your stereotaxic devices and your roving guillotines. Lay down your wires that shock and plates that burn. Lay down your tanks that drown and chambers that deprive. Lay down your sutures that blind and vices that crush. Lay down these weapons of evil and join with us, you scientists who are brave enough and good enough to stand for what is just and true. We welcome you into our ranks, ranks that have known the likes of Plutarch and Ovid Horace and Pythagoras, Plato and Socrates, St. Francis and Leonardo da Vinci, the poets Shelley and Browning, 